everyone likes to talk about high ISO these days, but today I want to give you a few reality checks and tell you the real downside to high ISO. Okay, so the first thing I want to put in place is when people say the ISO, the high ISO is very film-like, that's nonsense. Film grain was an actual physical thing. Different films had different physical particles of silver halide or different uh, light sensitive materials on them, which had an actual grain structure. When you went up to higher ASA rated film, they literally had larger dots on them, which gave them a natural grain. The dots you're seeing in your high, I, high ISO digital images is noise and interference. It's not a grain pattern that's repeatable in the same way that film is. So just put that little fallacy to one side. The second thing is, those little dots that you're seeing, that's not the problem with high ISO. So all this fuzziness is probably what you think about when you think of high ISO, or these next images. So often I hear people saying that ISO whatever is usable on my camera. If they've done the test and you know that it works for you, then great, go and shoot. But don't buy into the hype that because the image is free of those little dots, that you haven't degraded the image quality. You absolutely have. As you go up through the ISOs, you're throwing away tonal range and color range. Whether you're shooting portraits or weddings or concerts or, you know, people, you know, street photography, those things matter. And if you're buying the best equipment and trying to use the best technique, to get the optimal image quality out of your equipment, then shooting at the lowest ISO is where it's at. We're not talking about going to 12,800 is degrading. Even going to 400 or 800, you're losing a lot of that color and tonal range. People also say that depending on the lighting, if you light a scene well, then the high ISO isn't as much of an issue. The maximum amount of tone and color your camera can capture still falls away as you go up through ISO, no matter how the scene is lit. So if you want the best results, keep the ISO right down at the base number. Promoting the top spec of ISO for new cameras is great for marketers, but you want to completely disregard it. It's nonsense. Cameras advertising that they now go to 400,000 whatever ISO, it's just complete bollocks and it looks like absolute rubbish. There's no point in shooting with it and there's no point paying attention to it. Saying a new model camera goes to 400,000 and the old one went to 200,000 doesn't mean it's improved 100% in its image quality. It doesn't mean that 800 is the new 400. That's not the truth. You want to see how good the tone and color range is the overall image quality at each of the ISO levels. Saying that something goes to a million ISO and will be there in a year, I promise you, means nothing because you're not going to use it. And last point, so often I hear people saying, I need to upgrade my body because in the style of photography I do, I just need 25,600 or whatever at times, or I need 6,400 to be clean. Keep in mind that photographers have been shooting low light situations like weddings and concerts and all those sort of things for decades on film before we had the ability to just flick the dial, boost our ISO for the single shot. There are workarounds. There's old fashioned things with three legs like tripods that you can use to get a longer exposure. You can introduce light to the scene. Even shooting low light weddings, there's been workarounds for years that people use to be able to still capture the shots when we were limited to like 1600, 3200 on film. So don't think that you absolutely have to. It might be worth thinking around different workarounds. Of course, it's a nice insurance policy at times to have that option, and we all do throw it up from time to time. I'm not saying you shouldn't, just that you want to be aware that you are throwing away color and tone range, and you're degrading your overall image quality as you put up the high ISO. Okay, hope that helps. Leave me any questions. I'll see you soon. Check out my new interactive video workshop, Take Control of the Light with Matt and Tina. Over six hours of full HD content, including over a dozen interactive assignments to help you fully take control of your camera and understand how light works and how you can work with it to create the kind of images you want. <laughs>